Hey everybody, thanks for uh, stopping by the shop. Another Screwy Tuesday. I think this one's 51. Uh, I think. Getting close to a year. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about a couple things here. As you can see, I've got the lathe, the, the heart of the lathe open right there. We'll talk about that behind me. Uh, let's first uh, talk about a little machining job I did. The um, last video I showed you where the dog, my daughter's dog, had chewed off the end of the hose pump fitting, the male, male hose pump fitting. So I had to repair it, and I think I mentioned to you that it wasn't, uh, it was just pressed on there. It wasn't uh, threaded on or anything. So I had to make a new one. And uh, here's a photograph of the setup after it was completed. You'll see that the... Uh, the hose fitting that I used was a valve where you could turn it off and on. I think I used my hands. <laughs> a valve that you could turn off and on. And uh, that was the only thing I had around and I machined it so that it would press over the piece on the female and I would have the male end uh, to hook the hose onto. So uh, take a look. So, the, it was uh, a, a lesson, and, and doggone it, I wish that I had the camera on. It's a Joe McGee setup, uh, and I should have had the camera on, because you guys would have had a heck of a laugh. Uh, thank God I didn't hurt myself. So, I had this setup in the lathe, and in, this was held in the chuck, and then that yellow fitting was off of the end here. Well... It, it, it was a different, I'm just using this for an example, it was tight in the collet there. But again, trying to make sure it was concentric. And so I was using the bearing to push on the plastic piece to get it concentric, get it close. It doesn't matter, it's not that big of a deal. Well, I did it once and it worked really well and I did, I did a little bit of boring. The boring bar I was using was not very sharp, changed boring bars, fooled around. I went back to use the bearing again and I said to myself, hey, that's stupid, don't put the, on the plastic, don't put the bearing on the plastic, run it down and put it on the brass. Hey, good idea. So I ran down and put it on the brass, dialed it in so it was just ready to touch, turned on the lathe, forgot that on that valve, and you probably saw it in the picture, there's a little black thumb screw there to turn off and on, a ball valve. Well, that as soon as I grabbed the go lever on the lathe, that came around, caught the tool post, flinged this guy and, and the plastic piece, pulled it out of the collet, and hit me right, just uh, right of uh, the family jewels. Um, nice shot, uh, nothing too painful since it was plastic, um, but it, 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 it was a second lesson. I'm lucky it didn't come and hit me in the face or the teeth or anything else. Uh, it's the second time I've done this now where I've been in too big of a rush and I haven't hand spun the, the, the lathe to make sure I had clearance on the tooling. So I hope I learned my lesson and I thought I'd share that story with you guys. <laughs> Anywho, it, it works great. The pump's back in uh, service. Um, on, the, on the Monarch here, I uh, ordered a manual from uh, Monarch, 75 bucks. Uh, nice one and uh, it comes with a full uh, wiring di diagram, which is really nice. And so let me uh, report where we're at with the, uh, with the lathe. It is close to being repaired. It's finally diagnosed. Diagnostics are complete, and uh, I, uh, I know what's wrong. And the problem is, is this guy right here. It's a uh, 2000 ohm resistor. And uh, this is the, the reason that the lathe was having a problem. What this does is once the lathe goes under power, the contacts close, and this holds them closed. And what was happening is it would hold them closed to initiate the start, and then once the lathe sensed what the RPM was, it would release. Uh, and, and then it would, the lathe would slow down a little bit, and it would engage, release, engage, release, hence we thought we had an RPM variation problem. Um, so 
I just got to pick this up. We've bypassed it and it runs great. Um, now just a quick story about the machining community. So my buddy Carl, as you well know, has been helping me on this. He's, he's the electric guy. And the other night um, I got the new brushes. We put the brushes in the, uh, in the generator portion, not in the exciter, but just the generator. Fired it up and we were still having problems. We, this wasn't diagnosed yet. And it was late, he was pooped. He had some family issues going on and I said, hey, that's enough, go. Well, the next morning uh, I had learned about a fella that's supposed to be very knowledgeable on monarchs. And I texted him and said, here's my problem. And he said, well, I'm, I'm driving down south today and back up. He's up out of the Oakland area. Uh, he goes, uh, I'll be back around four, uh, maybe I'll come by. We went back and forth and he was having me do some tests, which I know nothing about electrical. So I sweat, just, just next to this right now, there's no power on, I don't like it. Anyway, we went through a bunch of tests and, and uh, the fellow was nice enough to show up here at about six o'clock that evening. I uh, got him a pizza and beer. Uh, I was really happy for him to come by. And uh, he was the one that uh, he diagnosed this. And uh, actually, I, uh, he asked me, do you have a spare? Do you have anything you can, we can wire in? I don't, and Carl's got everything, so I tried Carl. And uh, the two of them talked uh, for uh, probably a half an hour, uh, both on the electrical side of things and talking about monarchs and what have you. Uh, Alex, uh, I got, if you happen to see this video, uh, thank you very much. Um, I slept like a baby that night, uh, that, uh, knowing that it's uh, on the fix. We did jumper it and it runs great and uh, really excited. So I have to pick up this part hopefully tomorrow or, or order it. So also in the machining world, one of my viewers, uh, Jim Lecce, I think it's late Lecce, uh, knew of a guru up in Washington that also is very uh, smart on these units. Uh, he managed to get the guy's contact and email. I emailed him. The fella, uh, he's having some medical issues, uh, elderly fella, but uh, he was very nice to write me back, give me some suggestions. And uh, I just really want to say thank you to Jim and to Don. Uh, just kicking in. They don't know me you know, very well. Jim maybe from watching. And uh, they were there to help. No different than Alex. Uh, all he did was just a phone call. I knew somebody that he knew. I barely know the guy that he knows, but uh, it worked out really well for me. So great, great people uh, in the machining world are always out to help. And uh, I, I just can't express my gratitude. Uh, and I hope that uh, also Practical Machinist has quite a bit of uh, documentation on problems on, the, on these uh, units. I mean, this is a 63-year-old uh, lathe. Um, and actually this problem was on there, it was diagnosed and I was checking it to see, but the one that I saw in there had a blowout in it and this one didn't. So with that said, um, the, uh, Carl, Carl's been working on the uh, machine for me and uh, you know, uh, Mr. my good buddy Tom Lipton was in the uh, shop the other day and uh, here's a picture of, uh, my China Jack at work. I uh, ran over to my buddy Chewy's this morning and uh, helped him move and re-level his lathe. He had a new garage door put in and uh, I went over and we uh, got it all set up. So you'll see, here's a picture of uh, my China Jack uh, tagged by Mr. Lipton. Okay, we're back from that photo, and uh, <laughs> so Tom said, uh, you know, you found, you found one of the many. So uh, here's, a, uh, here's another photo. Uh, <laughs> Carl, looked at, Carl turns around and he looks at me. He's working in this panel. Come on, dog. Uh, he's, he's working in this panel. Okay, okay. Sit down, please. Sit, sit. Thank you. He's working in this panel, and the, uh, he goes, did you do this? And I go, what? And, and uh, he goes, did you do this? And I go, what? And, and I look, and here's a photo of, of what he's holding. 
and then a blow up of what he's holding. Uh, let's cut. Okay, we're back from that photo, photos. Uh, my camera shut off, so probably in a different position than where I was. Went in to produce the video and footage was gone. Camera had shut off. But anyway, I just got to say, Carl and I had a, one hell of a laugh uh, with uh, Tom's note that he left. So uh, Tom, I'll keep uh, searching around my shop and see what else uh, you planted here for me. Um, just in closing, uh, I just want to promote this again, I, I'm this uh, turtle wax label and sticker remover. Um, I'm going to see if I can do a before and after shot real quick for you. Uh, quite amazing um, how clean, how simple this works. This has uh, a citrus extract in it. You have to make sure it doesn't kill the paint, but I'll tell you, boy, it, it's a quick cleaner. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Um, and then uh, one other item, uh, I wanted some input from everybody. Uh, you guys have more experience than me, so uh, let me uh, grab the camera and uh, we'll move around back. So you can see uh, how clean this is and uh, let me put the photograph in prior to cleaning. Back from that photograph you can see uh, quite a difference. Um, I'm draining the, uh, the sump uh, for the uh, coolant and uh, interesting enough, I think there's 63 years of uh, chips in that uh, sump, and there's a baffle in there, so I got a lot of cleaning to do. But I'd like some input from you guys about running uh, coolant. Uh, the pros and cons, do it or don't do it. Um, and if it's a do it, uh, what's your favorite flavor of uh, juice to put in that puppy so it doesn't uh, turn rancid? Because uh, this lady's not going to be used eight hours a day every day running it so uh, some feedback on that would certainly be helpful okay guys uh, appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with me and uh, next uh, week uh, hopefully you'll see some chips turned on this puppy take care